The President, please be seated. The Chamber is now in session. Pursuant to our agenda for today's hearing, the semantic session is on the oral arguments concerning the Chamber's provisional list of witnesses, civil parties, and experts. Before we comments on the oral argument, We would like to remind the parties of our instruction yesterday. The parties are advised that when the discussion concerning the witness, expert, and civil party list begins, they should bear in mind that until a specific decision is made, no witness, expert, or civil party has as yet been rejected. They are also asked to limit their comments as far as possible to those witnesses, experts, and civil parties whose names have been included in the tentative list and to recall that this list is for the first phases of the trial. This morning, the Chamber will also have an additional instruction to all parties. And I'd like to give the floor to Judge Carwright for the additional instruction. Thank you, President. The President has asked me to give the following uh, indications. The trial chamber has not yet made a final determination whether certain experts in the tentative list should instead be classified as witnesses. It is aware of the comments and objections by the parties concerning the qualifications of some of the experts proposed by the parties. There is no need to repeat those observations today. Secondly, the trial chamber asks the parties to offer observations only on the names on the tentative lists using the pseudonyms provided. The parties are reminded that the Chamber will review the whole list of witnesses and experts provided by the parties as the first phase of the trial proceeds and will, as needed, add to the list of those to be examined. Thirdly, if any of the parties considers that it is essential for the trial chamber to include a witness or expert in the list for examination during the first phase of the trial, then the name should not be referred to in open court. The name can be provided to the trial chamber in writing by Tuesday, 5 July. The trial chamber does not intend that the parties reiterate their requests made in writing 
but wishes only to allow the parties to assist it in ensuring that no vitally important relevant witness or expert is omitted. Given the need to expedite the trial, the Chamber has limited scope for increasing the list. Finally, the lead co-lawyers are reminded that they have been given the opportunity to provide lists of relevant civil parties at later dates and that there is no need to mention any additional names today or by the deadline that uh, was imposed for the other parties. Thank you, President. The President, thank you, Judge Cartwright. The Chamber would like to inform the parties and the public that previously the Chamber asked the parties to prepare in case the hearing will continue to Thursday to Friday the first. However however it is unlikely as yesterday the two oral oral arguments were made and concluded on time. There is only one remaining agenda today regarding the list of witnesses, civil parties, and experts for the first phases of the trial. I'd like to give the floor now to Mr. Salsawan. Salsawan. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours, for giving me the floor. Good morning to the prosecutors, the lawyers for the victims, my colleagues, and the people in the public gallery. I am consulted. I have consulted with my other defense counsels, and they agree for me to have five or six minutes to talk and my client Kiss and Porn also would like to take the floor for five or six minutes. After having heard the instructions from your Honor and Judge Cartwright, it is much appreciated that there is no hearing on Friday. We are the defense counsel for Kiss and Porn we are always obliged to respect all the instructions by the chamber and I'd like now to seek your permission for my client to speak briefly and of course we follow any instructions uh, regarding the tentative list to be discussed. Would your honor permit my client to speak briefly? The President, Mr. Kielsen Pond, which subject would you like to talk about? We'd like to know the intention that you like to speak. Kielsen Pond, I'd like to talk briefly about my witness list. I clearly know that the list is tentative. If your honor permit me to speak, then it would be I would be much appreciated. The president, you are not allowed as instructed regarding the proceeding in relation to the tentative list of witnesses, experts and civil parties.
The President, we will now comment our oral argument concerning the Chamber's provisional list of witnesses, civil parties, and experts. Having provided the parties with its provisional list of witnesses, civil parties, and experts, on Monday, the Chamber will now give the parties opportunity to comment, including in relation to objections, if any, to this list. The parties are reminded to refer to individual witnesses, experts, and civil parties on this provisional list only by their assigned pseudonym. The floor is now given to the co-prosecutors. Mr. Sosovan, I notice you are on the, your feet again. Sosovan, Mr. President, I think there is a misunderstanding or maybe the information I gave to the President is incorrect. My client would like to briefly talk about three or four minutes only on the witness list and he will not go or wander into any other areas. He only speak on the subject of the witness list. Briefly only. Thank you, Your Honor. The President, the Chamber has already decided that your client is not allowed. And secondly, when your turn comes, then you can speak. That is your right and your client's right. But you need to ensure the confidentiality and to use only the pseudonyms assigned and not to reveal any names as discussed and instructed during the oral argument. Once again, the floor is now given to the co-prosecutors if you have comments to make regarding the tentative list of witnesses, experts, and civil parties as given to you by the trial chamber on Monday. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, everyone. The co-prosecutors would like to present certain arguments regarding the Chamber's tentative list of witnesses, experts, and civil parties for the first phases of the trial. The question is whether whose witnesses, experts, and civil parties should be summoned to testify and whether they are not necessary to provide their testimony before the trial chamber during the substantive hearing. After reviewing and discussing amongst ourselves on the tentative list of witnesses, experts, and civil parties, as given by the trial chamber, we observed that we would like to remove one witness from the list with the pseudonym TCW482. For the following reason. However, it shall be a close hearing when we provide our argument. The 
the court prosecutors would like to have a close hearing for, to provide arguments regarding this witness, TWC 482. Oh, good. The President, thank you, co-prosecutor. Do you have any other comments to make regarding the tentative list issued by the Chamber besides this one? The President, the Chamber, of course, uh, took note of what has been suggested by the National co prosecutor and you shall be informed in due course of our decision. Also, depending on the comments likely to be raised by other parties, the floor is now given to the International Co prosecutor. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, Council. Uh, Your Honours, we uh, welcome the list. Uh, we feel that uh, the list uh, will address some of the central issues in the case. And we note, uh, Your Honour's statements this morning, that uh, this is not a final list. And just to preview the prosecution's position, we will be filing uh, for another 15 witnesses to be heard in this part of the case. As Your Honours are aware, the prosecution have the onus of proof to prove the case, and we feel as though those 15 will be necessary. We will uh, file those uh, further names uh, by the 5th of July as you have uh, ordered. And further, uh, we also take note of your comment that uh, as the first phase of the trial proceeds, you'll be reviewing uh, the evidence and will create an opportunity for parties to further uh, make submissions as to whether or not uh, further witnesses are required into that part of the case. And the only reason why I briefly say that is, I think as your honours are aware, from uh, the previous case and, and certainly other cases. Um, some witnesses may not be able to attend. Some witnesses may have forgetful memories. Some witnesses uh, may be reluctant to talk. And because of all of those factors, we would certainly take up Your Honour's opportunity to address you as the first phase of the trial progresses. Thank you. The President, thank you, International Co Prosecutor. The floor is now given to the four defense teams, starting from Nunti's defense team. Do you have comments to make regarding the Chamber's tentative list? of witnesses, experts, and civil parties given to you on Monday. <coughs> Mr. President, Your Honours, good morning. We have uh, some general observations in respect of the matter of witnesses and experts. Um, that I make these observations today is very important to our client. We understand your guidelines. We know the tentative list is not a final list. We understand that. But we wish to make these general observations nevertheless. I will speak no longer than uh, 30 minutes. Mr. President, 
we were appointed as the defense lawyers for Nguyen Chia in the fall of 2007. After long talks with Nguyen Chia, we filed an important request to the office of the co-investigating judges. On 20 December 2007, we asked the investigating judges to allow us to be present at the examination of all witnesses. And although the internal rules do not provide us to be present for this possibility to be present, we made this request for two reasons. First of all, of course, to exercise the fundamental right of every accused to cross-examine witnesses. In my jurisdiction, the Netherlands, which like Cambodia has its origin in French law, it is standard practice in a criminal procedure to be present at the examination of witnesses by the investigating judge for this very reason. And secondly, to avoid the necessity of examining all these witnesses again at trial. Once an accused has had the opportunity to question witnesses at the investigation stage, he does not need to repeat this examination during trial. In fact, only in special circumstances does he have the right to do so. This guarantees a speedy, effective, and at the same time, fair trial. Yet our request to question witnesses was unfortunately denied by the OCIJ. In its letter of 10 January 2008, the investigating judges wrote that the internal rules prohibit the presence of defense lawyers during interviews of witnesses. And the OCIJ added, rightfully, I might say, that confrontations, confrontation of the witnesses during trial would serve as an adequate remedy. Now, in that same letter, the OCIJ also expressly prohibited us from conducting our own investigation. The investigating judges even thought it was necessary to inform us that it would be a criminal act if we were to bring pressure on potential witnesses. We talked again after this to our client, and we decided this time to make a number of requests to the investigating judges for specific investigative action. If we were not allowed to do our own investigation, then it was up to the investigating judges to do it for us. Now, which subjects for investigative actions were important? Which facts or events had to be properly investigated by the judges? Allow me to give you four examples. Our client instructed us that it was very important to investigate the role of Vietnam, not only in the period 75-79, but also in the time before and after the period of democratic Kampuchea. Many decisions in the DK period were taken because of Vietnamese policy. And such decisions can only be properly understood if Vietnam's role and policy is thoroughly investigated. Now also the disastrous consequences of the American bombings had to be properly investigated. Was there, for instance, a food crisis before April 1975? Yes or no? And if so, what effects did it have on the people of Cambodia at the time? Was the DK government able to do anything about it? Our client thought it is also very necessary to investigate the role of rogue commanders in, for example, the DK's eastern zone, over which the authorities in Phnom Penh did not exercise centralized control. 
very important issue. And our client also told us that Duik was not telling the truth about Neon Chia's role in respect of the cruelties that occurred in S21. The reliability of his statements was another issue which, according, according to Nguyen Chia, needed thorough investigation. Now, as you know, over the course of the three-year investigation, we filed 26 requests for investigative action. And in each request, we try to be as detailed and reasoned as possible. What did we want to achieve with these requests for investigative action? What did we expect? And what did we hope for? First of all, our client hoped that once the trial started, many of the issues we raised in these requests for investigative action would not need to be investigated during the trial. Nuentia has no interest, no interest in a lengthy trial. Our client is an old man nearing the end of his life and he would like this trial to be finished as soon as possible. But more important than a trial which is concluded quickly, he wants this tribunal to ascertain the truth. Not the story you can read in American or Vietnamese history books, but a truth, an historic truth, which also includes his view of the events which took place before and during the DK years. And the truth which also encompasses the rule of Vietnam, the consequences of the US bombings and other important contextual issues. In other words, a proper and fair trial not a show trial as in 1979. However, the responses of the investigating judges to our 26 requests were not promising, to put it very mildly. For instance, the reliability of Duik's testimony was not examined. Key figures from the Eastern Zone who now hold very important positions in the Cambodian government, were not interviewed. And the judges seem to make no effort to investigate the actual role of Vietnam. Mr. President, Your Honours, allow me to give one concrete example on the subject of Vietnam. So that the Cambodians who are present today in this courtroom, or who are watching the proceedings on television, know what I am talking about. On 20 December 2009, we asked the investigating judges to summon as a witness a person who I will now refer to as Mr. X. Why can I not, not, not say his name? You know that, because at the stage of the trial, or this stage of the trial, we are not allowed to use the name of potential witnesses. You have ordered us to refer to the witnesses, potential witnesses, uh, anonymous, anonymously by pseudonyms. But I have to say, we find that this, uh, that this clarification, this guideline remarkable, because this is a public hearing, and we feel that the Cambodian people are entitled to know about the, individu about the individuals of whom we are speaking today. But in any event, our client is, was of the opinion that the testimony of Mr. X is very, very important for ascertaining the truth. Very important to understand the role of Vietnam. Now, who is Mr. X? Mr. X has been an active figure in Cambodian politics for many years. At the age of 15, he quit school to join the Khmer Isarak, an anti-colonialist nationalist movement. During this period, he worked for Tamok, whom the prosecution alleges was a member of the CPK Standing Committee, alongside our client and others. 
From 70, 1970 to 1974, Mr. X was a member of the Khmer Rouge. However, he fled to Vietnam in 74 to help organize the Kampuchean United Front for National Salvation and was ultimately responsible for leading Vietnamese-backed resistance forces into Cambodia in 78. Okay. No. The President, uh, International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Just briefly, Your Honour. Um, we note uh, Defence Council's concerns about not being able to state people's names publicly, but by the same token, we do note uh, Your Honour's concerns that until such time that you're in a position to, uh, to know whether there is any protective issues for a particular witness, that out of an abundance of caution you have decided that, uh, certainly at least for today, that uh, we use pseudonyms. The, um, the prosecution's uh, view would be that uh, in a short period of time those witness assessments be made and then once they're made um, and if there's grounds or no grounds then names can be used publicly. But I think it's not appropriate to call someone Mr X and then start to bring out every detail that would identify Mr. X. So either this should be in closed session or alternatively, I, I think the, the details uh, should stop coming. And um, I think council and all councils be reminded that uh, uh, until such time that you change the order, we use pseudonyms today, but we also appreciate uh, council's view that this should be a public hearing. And that can happen, of course, very shortly once the assessments have been done. Thank you. The President, uh, we thank you, the International Court Prosecutor. The Chamber would like to remind uh, the defense team for Nguyen Chia that the agenda for the tentative list of witnesses have already been well communicated and instructed to uh, the parties to the proceeding. With regard to other list of witnesses and experts, if you feel that they are not yet included in the tentative list and that you believe the, these people are potential witnesses and experts uh, for the interest of your client, you are then advised to uh, list them in writing and submit to the chamber. The observation by the international co-prosecutor uh, is uh, very appropriate. Any explanation or any observation that leads to the revealing of the identity of the so-called pseudonym that uh, you refer to uh, uh, is a uh, and and this of course uh, violates uh, the protective measures uh, and also the witness protection principle has already uh, been the principle uh, rule and provision to be abided uh, by uh, everyone and internationally. The chamber will also notify the parties with regard to what kind or what form of protective measures or whether such protective measure will be also given to any particular witness or experts. Uh, and we believe that um, parties will be well informed. We once again wish uh, to inform the Defense Council of this and uh, please be carefully reminded. We will give the floor to the Defense Council to continue uh, his uh, observation, but please refrain from going back into uh, the 
discussion of the de detailed identity of uh, any particular witness or potential witness. Thank you, Mr. President. I will stop talking about Mr. X. I was just mentioning him as an example, nothing more. My point was, uh, the point that I wanted to make was that the investigating judges simply refused to even interview Mr. X. They said his testimony was unnecessary. When my client heard that, he was shocked. How could that be possible? Were the investigating judges not interested in the role of Vietnam or in his story? Did they not care? Were they only interested in, in, in uncovering inculpatory evidence? Was it true then, after all, what an Australian policeman with many years of experience, a man who had worked for years in the OCIJ, had said? You may recall the story. The newspapers wrote about it. This Australian nine at the private residence of investigating Judge Le Monde. The president, uh, the international co prosecutor, you may now proceed. Thank you, Your Honours. Um, when the uh, direction was, was issued for this week's initial hearing, you stated that uh, today would be a, a discussion about, about witness lists. And you also stated this morning it will be a discussion about the witness list that you put before us. Um, as, as Your Honours are well aware, the fairness of the judicial investigation is a matter that's before you. Uh, the defence have made that as a preliminary objection and you have specifically decided not to list that today. I'm certainly, we certainly want to be absolutely clear that we want all of the issues that are raised by um, all of the defence counsel completely public. But I think as uh, the trial chamber, trial chamber judges, the managers of this case, you have the right to manage the trial as you see fit. And certainly my understanding is that uh, this trial will be fully public but as far as today is concerned, I would, I would ask that uh, the Defence Council keep his remarks to the specific agenda remarks that you made, and we would support the Defence in public hearings of all of the issues that they make. But otherwise, you will lose control of this trial if people are allowed to make speeches and not confine themselves to the agenda that you set. Thank you. The President, uh, thank you, Mr. Co-Prosecutor. President, since uh, the observation by the Defence Council is not relevant to the item of the agenda with respect to the uh, witness uh, list, and the observation is of a broad nature, and at the same time, uh, the council keeps uh, revealing the identity of uh, a potential witness, perhaps, uh, and this, of course, uh, interrupts uh, our proceedings. Uh, the chamber wishes to, therefore, stop uh, the defense council from making further observation with respect to that uh, aspect. Would you wish to make any other observation with regard to the tentative list of witnesses?
Mr. President, do I have to understand the trial chamber's decision that we're also not allowed to speak about the selection of the tentative list, the selection of the witnesses? As I indicated, it was, it's only maximum 30 minutes that we are speaking about the very important issue of witnesses. Our client has waited four days for us to give this half hour the president, uh, the chamber has already made our decision that you are not allowed to make any observation beyond uh, what has been allowed uh, in the agenda. And the chamber would not wish to uh, allow you to speak uh, or take this opportunity to touch upon other uh, issues that are not that are not related to the uh, potential witness list. Uh, of course, the chamber has already made it clear that if you would wish to add uh, any names of potential witness uh, of your interest and your client interest into the list, then you still have time to do that in writing and have it submitted to the chamber. And if, for the time being, you do not have any further comments with respect to the uh, tentative list of the witnesses, uh, then we would like to uh, give the floor to other teams uh, for the defense. The president continues. Uh, we next uh, proceed to the Council for Inquiry if they would wish to make any comment uh, with regard to the tentative list of uh, witnesses. Uh, good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honors, and good morning to everyone in and around the courtroom. Uh, we do object to one particular uh, witness, Your Honor, and that is TCE44. TCE44, we had stated our reasons in writing and we would appreciate the opportunity to be heard uh, in closed session concerning to elaborate more on the reasoning with this particular witness. I would also like to observe that it is somewhat difficult for us uh, in going through these lists when not knowing what the other topics will be in the future. However, uh, we understand uh, how the uh, the trial chamber is has reached this this tentative list. I just make that observation that the sooner we know, it it would assist us. I also would like the uh, if it all if it is all possible, for the prosecution to turn over at least a courtesy uh, list of the 15 names it intends to to identify since they seem to know who they are. We need not wait until 5 July. Uh, for that. Also, if I may make one brief comment with respect to one comment made by the prosecution concerning the identity of witnesses, I believe it would be a fundamental flaw in, this, uh, in these proceedings if the list of witnesses were to be revealed prior to the witness appearing here in court. The public is entitled to a, an open and a transparent trial proceedings. I'm, uh, I do not, I submit that the, tr that the public is not entitled to know the names of the witnesses prior to the witnesses appearing. I think in most jurisdictions that's forbidden in any event. Why? Because witnesses can be tampered, can be pressured, harm may come to those witnesses. In light of the proceedings that, and, and the charges and the events and what have you, I think we should be more cautious. The public is not going to lose anything by simply seeing who will be uh, who is giving testimony at the moment they appear in court. That is the proceeding that is usually uh, abided by uh, at the ICTY and at the other tribunals. Publishing the list, so neighbors, friends, enemies, and what have you, know who the witnesses may be. 
could cause a tremendous amount of problems for this trial. And so I, I ask that you consider these remarks in your deliberations as to whether the list should be made public. And with that, I have one other observation, if I may, as sort of a, as an amicus to the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the Pond team, if I may make one remark, Your Honors, and that is under the ICCPR, Article 14.3a, an accused is entitled to defend himself through himself or through others. Now, I understand he has counsel. However, just uh, for, for you to be aware, at the ICTY, there are instances where the trial chamber would allow accused, even if represented, to uh, provide uh, comments or observations to the trial chamber. Uh, in this instance, it would seem to me that perhaps you may wish to consider uh, or reconsider your decision and allow Mr. Kusumpon to be heard. Perhaps he's in a best position, in a best position to comment about the witnesses that, or this event. Now, in the event, of course, he goes outside, you could cut him off. But it would seem to me that since we are, if you're going to consider this sort of a, a hybrid tribunal, national, international, this internationalized, which I hate using this term, but uh, I, I believe that it would not uh, it, it would not be unusual to allow the accused to make uh, submissions to, to the trial chamber, and I think uh, in light, of especially of the circumstances that we find ourselves here today. Thank you, Mr. President, and your honors. Welcome, Luke. The President, uh, thank you, Council Kanawas. The Chamber actually asked uh, the accused uh, person whether he would be talking on the list of uh, witnesses and civil parties as uh, delivered to uh, the parties. And of course, as I made it very clear, the Chamber wished to hear from the prosecutors and followed uh, by the Defense Counsel for the four accused uh, persons. And uh, Kilson Pond team, of course, will have an opportunity to have uh, a say in this hearing. And I really remember that uh, Council Saw Suwan uh, asked uh, whether when the opportunity comes, he would be able to make any observation and whether his client would be able to make such observation. And the chamber really uh, agreed that, of course, when the time comes, then your client would make the, the most of uh, that allocated time to uh, really make such observation. We never say no to uh, he, uh, making such observation. It is only just to restore order in the courtroom and so that, that the flow of the argument can be seen in the uh, order. Next, uh, we would like to give the opportunity to the defense team for Mrs. Ian Tirat to make any observation. Council uh, Pat Persian. Good morning, uh, Mr. President, Your Honours. I am representing Mrs. Ian Tirat. Uh, I do not have uh, much uh, to say with regard to the list uh, of uh, witnesses that distributed to us on Monday. So we can conclude that uh, we, for the time being, have no comments. The President, thank you, Council. Next, uh, we would like to proceed uh, to the Defense Council for Kyo Som Pon. If you would wish to make any observation with regard to the tentative list of the witnesses and civil parties, the floor is yours. Council So Sowan. I am representing Kyo Som Pon. Good morning, Mr. President, uh, Your Honours, once again. My client uh, would not really talk uh, uh, far beyond the uh, agenda, so could the chamber allow him five or six minutes to 
make uh, his statement or observation concerning the list of the witnesses and uh, the civil party. The President, uh, Mr. Kyo Sompon, you may now proceed. Mr. Kyo Sompon, thank you, Mr. President, for allowing me to address the courts now. Mr. President and your honors who are present today, and good morning to my fellow Cambodian citizens and my sincere salute to monks who are in the public gallery. I think it is the very important moment for me and for my fellow Cambodian citizen who are hungry for understanding what happened between 1975 and 1979. I personally have been waiting for this moment for so long. I am very fortunate. I am healthy enough at this time. As long as I am still as healthy as I am today, I will contribute to the best of my capacity, of course, to the bottom of my heart, to assist or cooperate with the work of the court. In order to make sure that what happened during the period that I indicated will be revealed to the surface, I personally am not fully knowledgeable of everything, but I will do my best to make sure that I can ascertain the truth to the full capacity if I can. With regard to the list of witnesses, I have already observed uh, the comments made uh, by the President uh, during the hearing that uh, this list is a tentative one. The tentative list for the four initial steps for this trial proceedings. And I still recall the observation, remarks made by the President uh, that no witness shall be objected or omitted. So I would not uh, wish to talk uh, much further on the list uh, of the witness. My general observation here is of course aimed uh, to make it known uh, to the public. Uh, I have observed that the majority of the witnesses in the list belong to the prosecutors, uh, the witnesses of the prosecutors. The majority, I mean super majority of the witnesses, or I may say almost all the witnesses are uh, proposed uh, by the co-prosecutors. I haven't even spotted uh, any of uh, the witnesses I proposed. Uh, I have noted very few. But uh, 
uh, those witnesses that we had earlier proposed uh, have now belonged to the co-prosecutors. They become eventually the uh, inculpatory uh, witnesses rather than the exculpatory ones. I note that my contribution to make sure that the, these proceedings are smooth and proper and to make sure that the truth is finally ascertained and that uh, the fairness and, and that my honesty will be revealed. This can only be made uh, if the court agrees to pay attention, to listen to, or to hear the key witnesses that my team uh, proposed. Many of the witnesses uh, I proposed uh, have known me very well. They have been closer to me. They know where I would uh, be doing anything. And uh, of course, they had a very good account of me. Uh, those witnesses can talk about their work, and at the same time, those accounts will reflect of what I could have been doing back then. To that, uh, I would really uh, request that the chamber take note and include those witnesses and summon them for testimony. They shall be heard. I don't say they should, but they shall, shall be heard. Some witnesses, of course, actually did not really uh, tell the true story, or sometimes they just exaggerated uh, the information. That's why it is really important that uh, our witnesses uh, be included. Uh, and finally, I would like uh, to request uh, that the chamber take our or my request uh, seriously. And. I will eventually present uh, the list of my witnesses uh, in writing at a later date uh, uh, so that uh, clarity has been added, uh, will be added. Uh, and that is all uh, from me, and I am very grateful to Mr. President and your honors. I thank you my fellow Cambodian citizen and the monks who are in this public gallery also. Thank you. Yeah. The President, next the Chamber would like to give the floor to the lead co-lawyers for civil parties if they have any comments to make or any objections to make regarding the tentative list issued by the Chamber on Monday. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, everyone. And my respects to the monks. The lead co-lawyers have some observations to make. And I'd like to seek your permission for my colleague, Ms. Ford, to make an observation regarding a witness. Therefore, I'd like to, and next I'd like to give the floor to Ms. Martin Jacques to make observations regarding two witnesses. And then the floor shall be given to Ms. Stutunski in relation to three witnesses. The President, you, yes, the Chamber allows for your request. 
just just a few specifications given the timelines that we have been communicated and the instructions issued by the chamber we have very few remarks to make today they will deal certainly with the status of certain issues who have been proposed our fellow counsel may also have a few very brief observations to make i simply want to state that there is a witness under tc W 608. This proposed witness must be heard. The chamber, however, must change this person's status in light of the decision of the PTC as this person is now on the list of civil parties. I wish to hand the floor over to my colleague, Council Jacquin. Good morning, Mr. President, your honors. I have three observations to make. The first, the, the first concerns TCW 348, this person is going to be on the list of civil parties. The second person concerns TCW 531, whose civil party status has not been determined. And on that point, this proposed witness has told me that he does not want to participate unless he is admitted as a civil party. And as a general comment, we believe that the identity of civil parties who may appear before this court may not be known publicly before they speak. This is for reasons of security as well as uh, the protection of their privacy and personal safety. Thank you, Mr. President. The President is Sutonski. You may now proceed. Good morning, Mr. President. Good morning, Your Honours. Good morning, everyone. I would like to submit some remarks on policies, which is one of the segments that the trial chamber has selected as for the first phase of this trial. Among these policies uh, during the DK period, I would like to discuss the witness list with regard to the policy on regulation of marriages. And second, the enemy policy. The first point the policy on regulation of marriages uh, is different from the other policies under the Khmer Rouge during the DK period. Why is this the case? This policy was... Mr. President, I wish to be heard. I have the President... Ms. Zutinsky, you may stand down, and the floor is now given to Michael Canavas. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Your Honors. Uh, this is not the time or place to be making speeches. This is what we were uh, instructed to. 
and everybody has to abide by it. We understand that the civil parties play a role. We respect that role. We encourage that role. But they don't get to have exceptions made to the rules. They can, they can tell us simply, like everybody else, whether they agree to the list or object to anybody on the list. But as far as policies and, and what those policies meant and how they're different, that's irrelevant. Oh, good. No. The President, I notice Mr. Sosoban would like to st speak. You may not proceed. Sosoban. Of course, like in the case of Mr. Coupe, I also wanted to talk about the procedure, but it is outside the agenda today. Today, we have four accused. So please focus on them, not on the regime itself. The President, thank you, Council, for your comment. Ms. Stutunsky, please be advised that your comments solemnly be related to the tentative list of the witnesses issued by the Chamber. Your comments all means you focused on or you agree upon those lists or you object to those lists. For example, in the case TCW608, who is currently recognized by the pre-trial chamber as civil party, so the trial chamber shall consider the status of that person again, whether the person shall be under the witness list or shall be removed and put it in the civil parties list. That is what we want regarding this procedure on the list of the witnesses, civil parties and experts that we already determined and set in our agenda. If you have other comments outside this topic, then you are not allowed. Do you have any comments to make? In regards to the tentative list, yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Of course, uh, I do have, and the only thing what I wanted to do is to explain what I would like to uh, say to three witnesses uh, who are on the tentative list of the trial chamber and of course to that you can understand what I mean I think I should be allowed to explain a little bit and without saying only TCW 604 TCW 707 and TCW 1 to six, these are perhaps to start in another way, uh, the witnesses um, on, with, on whom I would like to give some comments with regard to their knowledge or their purpose to talk among other things about the regulation of marriage. And maybe I would like then, I would need perhaps 10 minutes um, for this to explain um, why I would not, or we would not object to these listed witnesses. But with regard to the policy, and this is one of the issues today, and therefore I think um, the defense as well should understand what we say instead of only listing uh, pseudonyms and uh, listing numbers to get a little bit more the floor. So I would uh, request uh, 
the Mr. President uh, again with regard to these witnesses whose pseudonyms I mentioned to explain why I think that these witnesses are not sufficient to elaborate on the policy of uh, this sort of commentary could be made by all the parties. The President, once again, the Chamber would like to advise Ms. Stutinsky that other parties who have made comments, they made comments to the point precisely, but in your case, you rather cause complications and your comments does not seem to be straight to the point regarding the list of witnesses, experts and civil parties determined by the Chamber. I hope you follow the examples of the lead co-lawyers it means to only make comments on the point precisely. And the three witnesses that you would like to comment upon, is it your intention to make an objection to it? Can you make it more precise and not to make a general comment? You should make comment for each of the three witnesses that you like to make comments upon, whether they should provide the testimonies, because each of them would provide testimonies on different facts, as they are concerned and related to various facts or even to the same fact, but their understanding may be different. So this is the last chance that the Chamber would like to give to you to be precise to the point, otherwise you will be stood down if you persist to make it repetitive in contradiction to the instruction given by the Chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. I start with the discussion of a TCW 126. This witness is with regard to regulation of marriage only. Um, could contribute partly for the temporal, with regard to the temporal jurisdiction, um, but would not cover the whole period. With regard to the witness TCW 604, And with regard to regulation of marriages, this witness would also cover only a very short period of the time, the period that is 
before this court. With regard to TCW 707, this witness seems to be a victim, but to my understanding, not representing the majority and of those who were married. Therefore, um, we suggest for the face of this segment with regard to this specific policy to include, and this is already before um, before you, uh, evidence that was submitted as a statement, but which we would like to present to you now. And the President, uh, Council Kanawas, you may proceed. Mr. President, Your Honors, I don't mean to be disputatious. But I am going to be objecting each and every occasion when all of us are not abiding by the rules. Now, your honors have indicated that the parties have an opportunity to supplement this list. And that was the reason why I understand counsel for Mr. Nunchia sat down when he was asked to, uh, to move on. Kyu Sumpon stood up and made the same uh, observation that he would be adding to the list. Now, there's no need for this particular council to be giving commentary. There is the opportunity provided by the trial chamber. We welcome that. We're grateful for that. But I think it's an abuse of your honor's generosity to allow someone to simply be making speeches as to what should be included. If anyone feels that the list is not representative sufficient for a particular seg segment of their case or for a particular point, they have the opportunity, because you provided it to us, to supplement that list. And I apologize for having to object, but I will do this, and I'm doing this early now, so that hopefully we won't be uh, uh, having problems throughout the proceedings. Well, I couldn't. The President, thank you, Council, for your remark. Council Stutinsky, you are not allowed to stand anymore to make comments regarding this topic. The President, the Chamber would like now to give the floor to Judge Cartwright in order to ask Counsel Stutunski regarding the three witnesses. Thank you, Mr. President. Ms. Studunsky, the role of the civil parties uh, led by the lead co-lawyers who should have the primary role in these proceedings in representing the consolidated group is to support the prosecution during the trial. Of course, there are other roles. I am still not clear whether you, on behalf of the uh, consolidated group, accept the three witnesses, 126, 707 and 604. Can you say in one word, yes, I accept them, or I object to one or more, please? Hmm? If uh, I have the choice to um, 
say I accept them or uh, object them, uh, I can uh, let you know I accept them. Thank you very much. Given that all three were proposed by the prosecutors, that is a very appropriate indication. The President. Something. The President, uh, Council Ang Adam, you may proceed. Council Ang Adam, good morning, Mr. President uh, and your honors. Since uh, Mr. Ian Sari has experienced a uh, lumbago problem, could uh, he be excused uh, and observe the proceedings uh, from the holding cell? 
the, this morning and uh, this afternoon. The president, uh, we have uh, taken note uh, your request and uh, that uh, Mr. Yang Sari is allowed to be excused uh, from this courtroom and that he uh, can still observe the proceedings uh, in the holding cell through the video link. The security personnel are now instructed uh, to, of course, uh, take him uh, to the holding cell, and uh, the AV officers are now instructed to make sure that the video link uh, is uh, well installed so that he can observe the proceedings uh, through remote uh, participation. Next, uh, it is an appropriate uh, time for the adjournment, uh, but uh, before the adjournment, the chamber would like uh, to inform the parties and the public that the public hearing session during the initial hearing that has uh, been conducted uh, so far has come to the conclusion and the following session after the adjournment uh, will be in camera as uh, requested uh, by the national co prosecutor During the closed session, the hearing will be conducted uh, very briefly and there will be no hearing session this afternoon. We hope this information will assist uh, the public to make sure they can uh, return home uh, this afternoon. Uh, Council Kanawas, uh, you may now proceed. Thank you, Mr. President, and I don't uh, mean to upset the, the calendar uh, for the court, but I was under the understanding that uh, we were going to be discussing any other matters that might be uh, outstanding. I think that was my impression uh, at the conclusion of dealing with this, this issue. Uh, now, if, I'm, if I misunderstood the trial chamber, uh, then my apologies, but there are some other issues which we feel should have been included in, if not this initial hearing, a subsequent initial hearing or hearings prior to the commencement of the trial. Uh, so with all, with all due respect, if it would be at all possible to deal with those matters when we come back first, that would take about 15 or 20 minutes, or 15 minutes, for me to raise at least what I believe are other additional matters which should have been included in this or perhaps a subsequent initial hearing or hearings. And then we can go into private session concerning uh, the, uh, the one witness uh, with, which the prosecution has objected to since the, uh, the public will no, no longer be needed to uh, or be available to uh, to watch the proceedings. There are three matters that I believe are jurisdictional. The president. Uh could you please uh, make it uh, clear what would be the three issues that you would like to uh, be heard? Uh, uh, we, you can do that uh, before the break, uh, and uh, I think uh, the chamber will take the opportunity to uh, address uh, these issues uh, before the adjournment to save our, our time. Uh, very well, Mr. President. Now, I, I will not go through my entire presentation. Uh, but just briefly to mention the three issues. One is the applicability of international law. The second is the applicability and application of command responsibility. And another one deals with the application of crimes against humanity. 
it is our respectful submission that all three of these issues are jurisdictional even if even if the matters that we are contesting may go to what is considered the contours of of uh, the applications of these laws so that's that's uh, essentially in a nutshell if 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 it's if this is not the appropriate time but nonetheless these are issues that must be resolved prior to trial we can deal with them at another hearing but it is our respectful submission that even if not characterized or if they even if they don't come within the strict definition of a jurisdictional issue these issues as long as well as the issue on jc must be addressed and resolved prior to the commencement of the proceedings and whether we will be afforded the opportunity to give oral argument or rest on our pleadings or make further submissions as a, by way of a reply if we were the moving party surely a welcome instructions from the trial chamber I hope that has been of some assistance. Well, I couldn't look with the weekend. The president, uh, thank you, Council Kanawas. Uh, Mr. Kope, you may now proceed. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, we have only one uh, request for clarification, and that is something I feel should be discussed in public and. We could do that after the break, but the request of clarification um, sees about uh, Rule 80 bis, the rule on the initial hearing. Um, we understand uh, this provision to be as follows. It's, it stipulates that the trial chamber shall, at the initial hearing, consider the list of potential witnesses. Um, now, we have understood this rule to imply that the initial hearing is the time to debate publicly the requests for witnesses from the parties uh, and that your prosecution can object to witnesses requested by the accused and that we can object to witnesses of the prosecution. So that I mean I'm speaking about the witnesses not included in the tentative list. And um, we would like to have guidance on uh, the word consider as laid down in Rule 80 bis. Is there going to be another initial hearing where we can argue why our witnesses who are not on the tentative list should be at one point or another on the final witness list? Uh, we just need clarification on that specific issue. Okay, maybe the president. Legal lawyer for the you may now proceed. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, we also believe that another initial hearing will be necessary in order to discuss the lists, among other things, and also point legal points. And we would like to receive extra clarification regarding another initial hearing, and we would like to know when this initial hearing may be scheduled. Uh, thank you, Your Honour. Um, perhaps just briefly, uh, the prosecution certainly supports as much of a public hearing on these issues as possible, and we are aware that uh, a number of matters um, haven't been dealt with today, and we're aware of your order stating that you would advise us um, shortly as to how they'll be dealt with. But certainly, we would like to support uh, the defence and the civil parties that uh, as much of this hearing should be as public as possible and certainly because of the, uh, the size of this trial, the number of accused and civil parties, there's certainly quite a number of issues that need to be resolved before the beginning of the case and so any more initial hearings, trial management meetings um, and uh, meetings of that sort in the courtroom we think will be invaluable 
to ensure that once the trial starts, um, it will run smoothly. The President, uh, thank you, the co-prosecutor. Judge Labeanya, you may now proceed. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. President. I have a few questions to put to Council Carnivas because I am afraid that uh, his uh, statements were not fully translated into French. Uh, he brought up three issues that he would like uh, to see covered uh, during an initial hearing, if I understood properly. But as far as I know, I only heard the first issue regarding the applicability of international law. So I do not exactly understand what this means in this case. And I also heard about uh, crimes about humanity, but uh, against humanity. So what I'd like to know, if you are speaking about issues for which he, you, he was not able to file written submissions until now, or, 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 or these are completely new issues. What exactly is at hand? Uh, thank you, Judge Laverne. To, to recap, there are three issues. The applicability of international law, the applicability and application, or the extent to which command responsibility is applicable, and the application of, of crimes against humanity. To answer the latter part of your question, or the second part, we filed written submissions. I, uh, rarely do we take a chance in having an opportunity for oral submissions, so we avail ourselves to, uh, to filing written submissions. So we have submissions. We have not filed replies. The prosecution has filed uh, their responses. Of course, our submissions are based on what the pretrial chamber found. So the issues have been litigated before the pretrial chamber. We've, we made submissions before you by way of a motion. The prosecution has responded. We have not filed replies. It is our understanding that these fall within the ambit of jurisdictional issues and therefore uh, can or should, more, more in, in, a, in a way of should be heard as jurisdictional issues, even though when dealing with the contours under um, Rule uh, 89-1A and 89-1B, but even if, even if the, uh, the trial chamber were to find that these are not necessarily jurisdictional issues because it's not a matter of whether they apply, but whether to what extent they would apply, then we feel that these are the sort of issues that need to be fully resolved prior to the commencement. Now, with respect to JCE, since we're dealing with JCE 3, it is our respectful submission that this is indeed a jurisdictional issue. We're not talking about the contours because JCE 3 is distinct. A decision was made that it doesn't fall within customary international law during the temporal jurisdictional period of this particular tribunal. We had th the parties had 30 days to file the jurisdictional uh, issues. The prosecution did not avail itself. Nonetheless, they filed this one. In any event, when we, we already made a submission that it's untimely and should be outright dismissed, there's a pending motion, which we filed on an expedited basis. The reason for filing that motion was we want to know whether we need to respond to it or not, or whether it should be objected for lack of timeliness in the fact that it's a jurisdictional issue. And I say this with all due respect, and, and let me take this opportunity also, Your Honors, to extend an apology to the prosecution. On Monday, I did not 
intend to say that they're trying to sabotage the tribunal or the trial itself. What I wish to convey is that it's, they're delaying the process. And, if it, and I apologize uh, privately to Mr. Cayley that I, and I, and I say, I take the opportunity now to do so in public, that it's not my intention to, to delay the, the, the trial any, uh, myself. But with respect to this issue, we, we feel that a decision was made. The prosecution knew they were going to challenge it. We feel it's a jurisdictional issue. And the reason we want a decision now is because we're at the stage where we have to deal with the facts and get ready for trial. And there's a lot of work that needs to be done in filing a submission. And I can say with all degree of certainty and humility that when we do file submissions, we don't do so lightly. We try to present essentially academic articles to you in trying to distill the law and to uh, pr provide the best possible analysis that we know how. And there's a lot of work that, 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 goes, in, uh, that goes into making a, uh, preparing a submission within the page limitations. Now some may not be accustomed to this sort of trial advocacy. This is how, this is based on my own jurisdiction. But we try, a lot of work goes into this, and that's why we feel that a decision at least early on should be made on whether it should be accepted. We've already begun the process, because I'm not going to assume that I'm going to win every uh, motion that I file. But in any event, uh, we, would, we believe that these three issues, and others as well, must be resolved prior to the commencement of trial so the parties have notice and certainty. The President, uh, Count, so uh, could you please hold on because uh, we have been advised uh, by the AV uh, unit that the DVD has run out. We may take uh, one minute uh, break uh, so that the DVD is uh, ready. The President, Council, Kanawas, you may now continue. As, as I was indicating, we, we've, it is our submission that these three particular issues that I've raised, these three motions, deal with jurisdictional matters, even if the trial chamber finds that they do not. They're vitally important and they need to be resolved in advance so we can have some certainty and notice as to what it is that we're going to do. With respect to JC and JC3 in particular, I strongly disagree with the prosecution's position that even if you were to find that it doesn't apply, that you should go seek further clarification through Amici. Why? Because when we begin the trial and we begin the questioning of the witnesses, depending on wh where the law is, what the contours are, that will, uh, from there, we will decide to what extent we are going to cross-examine witnesses or question witnesses. And therefore, uh, we need certainty. It is not a matter of recharacterization. That mode of liability was found not to have been part of customary international law. And if you were to buy the prosecutor's argument that it needs to be reclassified, we would respectfully request that that issue be resolved prior to the commencement of the trial. It would also assist the prosecution, because I'm certain they would like some certainty. That's all, you, uh, Mr. President, Your Honor, and I appreciate and I, I thank you for uh, extending me this opportunity to, to make my presentation. The President, International Court Prosecutor, you may now proceed. Just a brief response, Your Honour. Um, as you know, this matter is before the court. We certainly agree with the defence that uh, early resolution of the matter um, would assist the parties. As Your Honour is aware, 
Uh, we believe this matter is not jurisdictional. I won't go into the, to the argument about that. That's not the purpose of today. But just perhaps one, one response about uh, the remark, the prosecution is delaying things in this trial. I think your honours are well aware and the parties are, are well aware the prosecution has been as prompt, if not more prompt, than uh, many of the other parties in the proceedings in complying with trial chamber orders. And certainly over the last five or six months, as your honours are aware, the filings from particularly the Yang Sari team have been absolutely voluminous. And we've responded to every one of those on time, asking for very few extensions. And to say that somehow or another that is not delaying the trial and filing three motions is, I think is uh, slightly contradictory. So, uh, Your Honours, just to make it clear for the record, we did not wait to file these motions till this date. They're recharacterisation motions. We could have filed them halfway through the trial, but we thought for in the interest of the parties would file them earlier so that uh, there would be more clarity. Thank you. Mr President, I do need to respond briefly. First and foremost, because the impression is being given to the public that somehow by filing uh, voluminous filings, uh, somehow it's, we're trying to delay. As I've indicated yesterday, these are all new issues. Under the procedure, I'm entitled to represent my client and to vigorously uh, uh, fi make filings to assist the trial chamber in knowing what the law is. That's the reality in this particular case. The prosecution did not ask for, regrettably, a mere recharacterization. When you look at the substance, you look at the, the first paragraph and then you look at what they're asking. What they're asking is the dismissal of the pretrial chamber's decision. Now, as I've indicated earlier, a rose by any other name is a rose. And you can call a motion however you wish. And you can dance and dazzle around the issue. But at the end of the day, when you look at the substance of it, what they're asking you to do is a jurisdictional issue. And if I've been filing a lot, it's because I have an obligation to be due diligent. And the prosecution on this instance has not been due diligent or, in the alternative, have purposely waited in order to uh, to get an advantage in this particular case. And that was, my, that was what I was trying to convey. I am not suggesting that they are purposely trying to delay the trial. Let me make that clear, Mr. Smith. That is not what I'm saying. What I am saying, however, that making these filings at this late of the day, one, are prejudicial because they're untimely and the trial chamber should not accept them. But more importantly, I think it is galling to say in your pleading, even if you decide that the pretrial chamber was correct, then seek outside legal assistance, as if you're not capable of it, to tell you whether JCE3 was part of customary international law. That was the thrust of my argument. So let me make it very clear. We are not suggesting that the prosecution is attempting to delay the process they never have. I am suggesting, however, that that motion is untimely, that most likely it was done for tactical purposes, that it should be denied outright, and we should not even have to take the time to respond to it. We will do as instructed. But we do feel that suggesting to you, Your Honors, that somehow you should seek outside help, even, when you, uh, even if you find that JC3 does not apply as the pretrial chamber did in a 68-page decision, and they've had five or six months to get this act together to file the motion, then I do think that would delay the process of the trial, because I don't feel that I should be able to, uh, that I can pro properly represent my client if I don't know whether JC3 applies or does not apply. And I would be making, at that point, a submission for a stay of the proceedings until that is fully resolved. And I also think it's almost insulting to suggest that you, Your Honors, would need outside help after you make a decision. We, 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 respect, we would request 
simply that all these matters be resolved early. And I trust that my, my extended apology to the prosecution for my uh, unfor un unfortunate use of the word sabotage will be accepted by the prosecution and we can move on. Thank you. The President, uh, thank you. I think it's now the real appropriate time for the adjournment. Uh, we will take 25 minutes break and resume afterward. And the uh, session will be in camera. Some Jane Groucho.